Hello, I'm Maria McCurley, and this is the hunker hunker love that is James Martin on Food for Lovers. Now, we're going to show you today how to put the romance back in the kitchen with the help of today's guest, who is the gorgeous Simon Biaggi. Simon, welcome. I'm in the Hi, kitchen. Hi there. Very nice, nice to see you. you. How are you doing? Very well, James. You, you? <laughs> enough, we'll I'm surrounded by love gods here. Uh, How marvellous. The money's in the usual place. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, what are you going to cook today? Uh, what we're doing, we're doing the ultimate sort of aphrodisiac food. Oysters. Mm. Oysters. In particular, we're like going to make. I, I do love oysters. A yeah. granita, What's which that is uh, it? it's like a sorbet, but it's um, it's basically a blend of sugar, water, and we're going to do a bloody mary granita, which is like a it's like a iced with obviously tomatoes, uh, Worcester sugar, sauce. Water, that's, uh, yeah, Worcester tomatoes. sauce, horseradish, that sort of thing. But it's over ice, but over raw oysters. It's right. very traditional. Absolutely. Traditional wonderful. from where? Traditional from me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, I'm starting a new trend, questions. but it is. It's fab. Oysters with granita. It's wonderful. Oh, wow. Ice granita. And then we're going to do sort of angels on horseback or devils on horseback. Angels using the oysters. We might do if we've got any left. But then devils on horseback with some prunes right. uh, wrapped in bacon and do a Thai chili jam. The two don't really. You wouldn't normally anticipate them going together, but they do work when you taste them because the Thai chili jam really with rich the, in chili. With the bacon. With the bacon, the quite spicy, you know, quite hot. I like that. I like Trust spicy me. food, so this is going to be good for me. Yeah, this is yeah. Good. yeah. yeah you like, oh, yeah. like this. Can you just show me something about those oysters, please? Now, how do you know whether or not an oyster is shouldn't be eaten or shouldn't be used? Well, you don't really know until about three hours afterwards when you're normally on the loo <laughs> for a fortnight. Well, that's what I was but trying to avoid, <laughs> waiting you can't for that really, moment. Um, you can smell whether an oyster's bad. No, when you open it, dear. All right. Yeah. But when you when you open it, you can smell whether it's bad or not. But um, not a lot, really. Uh, you can normally it's tell. It's not like um, you know, you can't tell because the, the shells are slightly open. If it is open, you can you can just prod it in the middle. But that's that's that. These are all alive. These where do you all... get oysters from? Because I've never seen them in the supermarket. I mean, uh, Lock Fine is normally the place where we get them from. It's a lock in Scotland. I know they it. Normally come from yeah. there. It's obviously. quite a big shopping trip, though, isn't it? <laughs> it is a bit, yeah. <laughs> but you can get oysters in supermarkets now. But tendency, really buy them from specialist sort of um, fish suppliers, fishmongers, and things like yeah. that. If you, if you, you know, to be sure they're absolutely fresh, because otherwise they put normally sort of sat there for a couple of days and then put back in the fridge and put out again for a couple of days yeah. and put back in the fridge. Make sure they're abs absolutely fresh. Okay. Right? So we'll let you get on with that. But now, what but, am I making, what cocktail-wise, for Simon? <laughs> Passion Do you daiquiri. like a drink, Simon? Uh, well, uh, if I'm twisted, yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called? This Passion is? daiquiri. Passion daiquiri. Now uh, this. <laughs> right, now you put ice. I don't know how wonderful You've I am. You've been doing this lots of times, haven't <laughs> <laughs> It's Passion daiquiri. Ice in first. Now ice, ice, in, the, ice in the glass first. Oh, in the glass? Yeah, in the glass. Okay. This is over ice. Right. He's very bossy. Yeah. I like that in a man. Do you? <laughs> It's a good job. You know, the, the budget things. of this show gets less and less due to the amount of bottles of alcohol that go in. So, how much of this? We'll be doing pasta. So, no, you, uh, anyway, you put Bacardi in first. Basically, I'm go. doing it all wrong. No. Simon Bacardi, will help me. Bacardi. There are three of us, Simon. All right. A little bit of Bacardi. Yeah, that's all right. That's okay. Yes, this. And then you put, this to, is... every, to every three parts Bacardi, yeah. you put one part passion juice. Juice, which is one, one part one, passion right. juice. Yeah. This is the passion part. Yeah, right. And a little bit of lime juice. Lime juice. T -t 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 Whoa! Too much. A little bit of sugar. A little bit of sugar. Okay. I don't like too sweet things. Well, that's, sugar. That's, that's okay. And then shake it all up, pour it onto the ice, and then serve with a bit of lime. I'm going to let Simon do How's this that? bit, actually. Oh, I've always wanted to have done that. There we go. Oh, give it some welly, Simon. Oh, <laughs> Shake and not stir. That's much very good. Of course, you being Scottish, you think. Oh, yes. I think you'd make a very good bond. Do you think so? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to tell the filmmakers that. Yeah, OK. Now, let's have a look at this. What's the difference between making it with the ice in the cocktail shaker as opposed to pouring it over the ice? It's just done over ice. Just a difference. Just Colder. A, oh, OK. Yeah. There we go. How's there. that? There. That looks nice. Yeah. There, one for you. Champing at the bit. One for the hunker hunker burning love. Notice you'll get the biggest amount. Pretty in pink <laughs> today. Well, cheers. Okay. Slangeva. Cheers. That is actually the best one you've done so far, that. Oh, that's all right. And that's not too bad, is it? Doesn't taste yeah. too alcoholic. No, we like that one. That's the best one that you've done. Right, well, I'm going to go over with um, <coughs> Simon to leave you on your own. Thank you very much. Leave me on my own. Right, I'll just get my chilli jam on here, which is quick and simple. So we've got our caramel in this pan. Now, that, all, all that is in there is just sugar on there, just plain cast sugar. And then we're going to quickly make my chilli jam to which we've got all these ingredients here. I've got my tomatoes, which I've chopped up. 
We've got chili, lime juice and lime zest. A little bit of lemongrass. Now you can get this in supermarkets now. Some lemongrass. If you can't get this, it actually comes in tubs already prepared anyway. Kaffir lime leaves. Quite difficult to get hold of. What's that called again? Kaffir lime leaves. Right. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I have, and they are difficult to get hold of. Quite know. difficult. Sometimes the supermarket has them, sometimes they don't. They may do them dried, but these are fresh kaffir lime leaves. The tendency is you normally get them if you find them that, that are dried. But if you can't get hold of them, use a little bit of Thai green chili pa or curry paste. Just a little bit of that that's instead, because right. that's actually got some and in as well. And you get that in supermarkets, you Yeah. Mm -hmm. so a little bit of shallots, some garlic, some ginger, and then all these here. We've got honey, sesame oil, soy sauce, and Thai fish sauce. Um, which is that stuff that not a lot of people like, but I think it's fab. Mm. So we throw in our tomatoes. So this is just nice and quick. We then throw in all our ingredients. You don't take the seeds out of this? Don't take the seeds out with this, no. Mm. The only important thing is, is you never go to the loo, Simon, afterwards. Right? <laughs> or take your contact lenses That's out. That's the one, yeah. <laughs> loo in particular. <laughs> <laughs> but we get our lemongrass and nicely finely slice this up. There we go. And then we throw all that lot into our blender as well. With our kaffir lime leaves, they can go in like that. Quite simple and straightforward. Our garlic can go in, shallot can go in. So it's just literally, so, oop, another <laughs> bit of shallot. It literally saves you from chopping it all up yourself. A little bit of ginger. There we go. And then you throw in our spices, which we've got our sesame oil. That can go in there. Soy sauce and Thai fish sauce. There we go. And our honey. And go in. So otherwise you're just literally chopping forever if you if you haven't got a blender. Mm. You're doing this for ages. A little bit of lime juice, that's in there. And then we'll get our caramel back on. See, these are fabulous. I love all the spicy stuff, but with a slightly sweet taste yeah, as well. It's really... Yeah. It is fab. It's, it's nice and easy when you've got everything prepared in ramekins, though, isn't it? Well, that's, that's not me. That's, <laughs> me. that's the guys part. in the back. We should be able to buy them in the supermarket. Lots of little dishes. Yes. <laughs> already, already chopped Very up. good idea. A little throwaway meal. All we do is just to blend this up. And normally when you're making sort of a chutney or a jam, you would obviously boil down it, boil it down with sugar, mm. which is basically the same as what you're doing here. But this is a quicker version. So if you get a caramel, so you've got the sourness with the soy and everything else, but you get your caramel and you want to take it till it's nice and hot, nice, nicely coloured, and it's all sort of dissolved, which is that is nearly there. Mm. Now all that is is just sugar. Can you overcook that? I mean, if you if you cook if you it overcook too, it, it goes black and technically. It's not good at all. Not good. No, I'll throw it away. Caramel. But it's not good. But once you get to a nice caramel like that, all we then do is literally throw in our mixture like that. Gently simmer that. It'll all come together with our nice caramel. We've got a little bit darker in colour. So you got our caramel. It's starting to get there. Gently simmer that for about five minutes, and you have the best chili jam in the world. Mm. So, but with our granita, we do nice and quickly. We'll get this on the go here. Put another do bowl on. Do you cook on. much, Simon, at home? Because uh, yeah, I love cooking, and especially things like this. Because my wife hates cooking, so um, yeah, it's down to me. Are you quite romantic in the kitchen? Uh, I'll, I mean, do you prefer like to make... save that for another room, actually. <laughs> <laughs> <I don't>... Well, <laughs> never you know. said you had to be something in the kitchen and something in the garage. Uh, yeah, something like that. Well, something no, else in the bedroom. I, I don't know um, if I'm romantic, but um, I mean, yeah. do you make her beautiful breakfast in bed and? Uh, not often at the breakfast. I'm not that brilliant in the morning, but um, I like to do sort of surprise meals. I think that's quite good fun. So she comes home and there's candles on the table and. Yeah, occasionally. I'm not very good at the romance. I keep forgetting the things like the candles and the yes. tablecloths and things like that, and just think the food's you enough. Do the but food. <laughs> yes, but that's a. But you did lots of getting up in the morning when you. Uh, GMTV. I did, weather. yeah. Yeah, half four every morning I used to leave for yeah. work. That means you've been put off it forever. No, I didn't mind it at all How getting up. How did you up do that for? About three and a half years. I, I quite like getting up early in the morning, but um, but it was just time for a different, different thing to do, something different. Yeah. But uh, it was odd because I would have breakfast before I left. I'd have breakfast at four in the morning. Oh, how can you face food at that time? No, I used to get up and I'd have a shower and a shave. I'd have my orange juice, my tea, my, my toast, my cereal, and then I'd go to work. And then about nine o'clock, I'd... Mm. And so I'd have another breakfast. <laughs> and then about 12 o'clock, I'd sort of had lunch. And then about four o'clock, I'd have my, my tea. And then and I'd realised that wow, I was eating four or five minutes. Well, I was. I put on two stone in, in about uh, three or four weeks. So I thought, no, I have to do something differently about yeah. this. So I was just hungry then. Uh, for most of the day. <laughs> so when did you, you got married recently, didn't you? Yeah, two years ago, uh -huh. almost exactly. So you're still in the kind of honeymoon period now. Uh, is, well, is that good? Mm. <laughs> yes, yes, we of are. Of course. Yes. And well, we, we lived together for a while before, so we're, we're not sort of new to each other. No. But, uh, but yeah, two years ago. And you went to a very romantic place for your honeymoon. 
We did. Uh, my family live in Scotland mostly, and, and I'm uh, Scottish, but we live in England, and my wife's Norwegian, and we thought, this is going to be really confusing. Where do we have a party? Where do we get married? What are we going to do? And uh, in order to make our lives simple, and because we love travelling, we went to New Zealand and got married and didn't even tell anyone. Oh, very good. So, yeah, in a very romantic place called the Hucker Lodge. Why was it so romantic? Um, it, it just had an atmosphere that was incredibly serene and beautiful and uh, I mean it was just an amazing place. I think we've got a picture of you actually. Uh, do you want let me just clean this a little bit? My, um. <laughs> actually that, that's, yeah. that's oddly enough even though we're dressed up to be married that wasn't in New Zealand because because we never told anyone uh, in Norway, we had to throw a party in Norway a oh, few I months see. later. Well, that's quite so, nice once you've got yeah. the ceremony over so, so in Norway, we had all Tova's relatives and family and what have you, and we got dressed up again, and we had a big wedding kind of Two party weddings. there. Yeah, yeah. And we were going to do the same for, uh, for Scotland, but we kind of run out of steam, I think. And money, <laughs> and probably, money, as yeah. well. That looks very romantic. I think that's a, a nice thing to do, to go away and not have to worry about all the relations. Yeah, it suited us. It was really good. OK, how's it going over there, James? Not bad. I've just got my nice little chilli jam on here. My granita, I'm going to do straight after the break. And I'll tell you what, this is not bad for you. Yes. I'm enjoying this. We're going to have a little sip of this and oh, wait for... Don't want to be left out. Wait for that lovely food. So we'll see you after the break. Bye for now. Hello and welcome back. Now, before the break, I got my lovely chilli jam on the go, which we've got here. Now on with our granita, our bloody, bloody Mary granita, which we've got in here. A little bit of water and some sugar. Caster sugar going in there. Quite a lot of sugar there, James. Quite a lot of sugar, because the sugar actually sets it. <coughs> a lot of people, when they make ice cream and sorbets, if you're making a honey sorbet or stuff like that, or an yeah. alcoholic uh, ice cream or sorbet, the alcohol or sugar acts as a defroster. And the more sugar they put in, the less chance it has of freezing. Ah. Oh. Mm. So. <laughs> they say feigning interest. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> in here now, I've got some tomatoes. Now I'm just going to pop in, this is just a tin of tomatoes that goes in there, like that, and some vodka, which Maria likes. A little bit of How vodka. How <laughs> <laughs> we've got any left, actually. A little bit of horseradish, <laughs> some Tabasco, a little dash of Tabasco, and some Worcester sauce, just a little. So with all these things, in, like Worcester sauce and Tabasco, but with the sugar, is it a sweet or a savoury yeah, dish? A, well, it's a savoury because you've got the oysters, but it could be done as a sort of middle course if you wanted to do a Bloody Mary granita, which is quite straightforward. And then all we do, once our sugar's dissolved, is pop in our tomato, like that. So could and you have the Bloody Mary granita as a kind of sorbet drink? You could do, yeah. Drink you could do. To clear the palate. Uh, I do a, a, like a, instead of that, I do a, like a tomato consomme as well, which is puree tomatoes and put through a muslin. And left put a through a muslin? Yeah. Muslin. 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 <laughs> muslin. Do you know, you just get abuse off the show, I think show, he means a cloth, does he? There you go. We pour that into there, whack it in the freezer, and freeze it for five hours, and then that'll set. Right, meanwhile, he's taking the mick out of me. I'm going to take the I'm mick sorry. out of the producer of this show. <laughs> And also the director, because look at this, they give me all these type of gadgets. Now, you know at home what I'm like on gadgets, not good at all. This is what they call a um, Breton oyster opener. Breton oyster. I call it rubbish, OK? But this is apparently how you open an oyster using one of these things. You put it on here, yeah. like this, <coughs> whack that on there, and then somehow attack it with this knife, which is like useless. Alternatively, you throw it in a bin, because that's a load of useless. We grab our tea towel, our oyster knife, normally with a guard on, but um, they like to stab me on this show. We literally pop our oyster knife in the side like that, and you can actually feel where the gap is. You can roughly, you'll know when it's there. It's gone in like that. And then when you put it in, there's a flat side to an oyster, and a rounded side. You go. The flat side needs to be pointing up. So you get it in a cloth, and literally, very carefully, because obviously the knife, if it slips, it goes straight through. But literally, very carefully, you rub the knife along the top of the flat side, like that. And you keep waggling the knife along the top of the flat side, and then the knife, the oyster, will just simply give up and open. Like <laughs> <that>. Sorry <laughs> about that. You know. That's forgetting my own. I thought we could have a go of that. Got, uh, and you then what we do is just trim this off like there, so it's you can actually down it in one. 
There we go. Simple as that. So it's quite easy, quite straightforward to do. So again, literally grab the knife along the top of the flat side, open it like that, and then just waggle the knife until it, there's a little membrane that goes on top of the oyster. And uh, if you get that, if you cut that membrane, the little flat part of the oyster will literally f come apart like that. Simple as that. I don't think you gave the Breton um, oyster opener a chance. Did I? James. No. It's a shame. That <laughs> you, went, you went all Yorkshire. But anyway, the producer does buy these stupid gadgets, but I keep just normal bit of tea towel and a knife around. There we go. Over to you. Thank you. Oh, well, I wanted to have a go of um, opening one of the oysters. So you can, a spare yeah, knife. I'll, I'll, no. This is more your thing, right? What we've got here, we're going to do devils on horseback. No pun intended. <laughs> I De didn't think there was a pun there. De <laughs> devils on horseback. We've got here some prunes. Now, suck these in tea. Tea and rum, um, which you'd enjoy as well. But we've got here. Does so the tea make it taste the tea? Tea, no, no. They actually expand. If you get these prunes, they're not that nice. But if you got them with the stones in as well, you actually poach them in tea. Just literally, uh, even a kettle full of boiling water and a couple of tea bags in there. So it's hot tea so, you put yeah. in. Can I and taste this? one, or are they all going to be used? Go on, you taste one. Yeah. Sorry, Simon. That's all right. Give me that. There you go. Thank you. Would you like a little piece? Yeah, I would, because I just wondered if they taste of things. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Good. And we're going to wrap those in bacon, pop those into the grill, and that will be our devils on horseback. Mm. They don't taste of tea. They certainly no, don't see. taste of tea. See, have faith in me. A bit of rum in there, though. Mm. Is there rum in there? Oh, you, said <laughs> that. you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is half a bottle, dear. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're going to go under the grill, and they'll be lovely in about three or four minutes. Thank right. you very much. Now, um, surely in Norway, then, they have uh, oysters, no? You not go diving um, in Norway for oysters because I know you dive. I don't, yeah, I, don't, I haven't. Uh, they're not a big thing in, in Norway. I, I remember um, I always wanted to have oysters, and but they were always too expensive. But when I was eighteen, my mother promised me she'd take me out for my eighteenth birthday, and we went to the Cafe Royal and had oysters and Guinness, and I thought they tasted like snot. <laughs> I just thought, oh my god, what is everyone going on about? These oysters are horrible. But since then. I discovered that you can have them cooked and then they're fine, but yeah. raw oysters... No, the, mm. the best ones you can go for are what they call native oysters, which are more like a scallop shell. Yeah. They're quite round, very expensive. OK, they're better. Much more expensive than these, but they're far better. You see, oysters. I've, I've dived for scallops in, well, in, in Scotland. Scotland yeah, yeah and, and they're great. I mean, really Scallops good. you can eat raw, are they? Yeah, you can eat scallops raw, they're really nice. But they're, they're really difficult to catch, they really swim fast. Oh, do they? Yeah, they, they, they lie in the mud. And uh, when you go near them, they sense you there, and then they up and they clamp their shells together and they squirt across the thing, and you, you grab them. Do you, put them do in the you bag. catch them by hand? Yeah, and you stick them in a bag, and when you've got a bag, you send them up to the surface. Or just put them on a little rope and, and send them up. But it's, and they're really, really yummy, but uh, the ones that you get in the supermarkets tend to be frozen and what have you, and they're yeah. not so nice. But, and there's something wonderful about diving for something and then mm, eating it later. Mm. Well, you know so it's fresh. fresh. You know it's fresh. Yeah. But, but uh, I've never seen oysters in, in Norway. It's always prawns, shrimps. What else do they eat in Norway? I mean, what does, if Torval was making you a traditional <laughs> romantic sort of anniversary meal, for example, what would she make you? Well, it depends where you are. If you're on the west coast... Smorgasbord, isn't it? Okay. Smorgasbord, if you're on the west coast, there's a lot of fish and what have you. Um, or, or sheep. They eat a lot of uh, lamb and things. But um, over where Tova comes from, just north of uh, Oslo, it's, it's a bit more of a mixture, but they eat a lot of meat, a lot mm. of meat and dairy products. Um, and they're big into their, their shrimps. You get a champagne bucket full of shrimps. Mm. And you buy them on the harbour, you know, um, during the morning. And then you go sit outside. They call it utamat, you know, because it's outside food. Right. And you're going to eat utamat. Um, and you have uh, a beer and some uh, shrimps and some bread and some dill and some mayonnaise and you just sit and shell the, the shrimps all day long. It's great because it sort of paces the meal out. Yeah. Um, but, but fresh Norwegian shrimps are just fantastic. Yeah. They get Do you think you'll ever... the fjords, don't they? Yeah, yeah, it's really cold, clean water, <laughs> so they, they, it's really good stuff. Do you think you'll ever go and live in Norway? I'd like to. I think it's a, it would be a good place to live. And it's not that far from, from Britain, so yeah. you know, it would be quite handy. Um, so yeah, I think it would be quite nice. Yeah. So, I mean, would you, do you think you could do a, what sort of programmes would you do? I'd, I'd like to do a kind of, a, a wild foods programme. Wild foods? Yeah, you know, foods that you can just find by foraging in the hedgerows. Oh. And, and in this country... Hedgehogs and stuff like well, that. Well, like roasted fat, hedgehogs, yeah, roasted a hedgehog. squirrel, you know, some dead crow. No, I mean, things dead like... Dead crow? Mm. Well, so you've got horseradish over there. I mean, it grows in the woods all around us. I mean, you just root it up and you get fresh horseradish. You've got, um, you know, the sap from trees, the mushrooms, all the berries and things like that, which our grandparents used to make things out of, but we don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, in this country, there's an awful lot of pollution, but in Norway, it's still quite clean and fresh. And 
they're massively big in, in into mushrooms in Norway. They they export loads of porcini to, to Italy. Oh, do they? And they grow them in the in the woods over there, and they go out and they forage, and, and there's just mushrooms everywhere. Sort of coals to Newcastle. Really. Yeah. I think I like the idea of that. I think you'd have to wear a loincloth, though, Simon. Biagi goes native. <laughs> have you sort of swinging, okay. swinging through the trees? Do you want to produce it? That'd be a good idea. <laughs> yes. And today we're going to be making horseradish, <laughs> fresh horseradish. Can I drag you off from this disgusting conversation oh, over here? We've got here some our oysters, which I've put on some ice. Now all we do is grab our granita, our bloody mary granita, which you can see. Look, it's not like a sorbet, whereas a sorbet has been actually in a machine. It's very smooth. Granita should be quite icy, quite. Chunks of ice. Slush puppy. That yes, sort is, of thing. Do you, have to, do you have to mix it up every now and then when it's freezing? You do. Mix it up you know, every 20 minutes or so. Um, what would it happen in, if you put it in an ice cream maker? It would go very smooth. Oh, it doesn't matter. Either or, you could have it really smooth. But granita, just like that, really. Nice and simple. That's your oysters. And very right. simple. Now, you don't have to eat these. You want to taste these little no, I don't prune think things. we've got a fork, have we? You'll like these prunes. No, I'll, I'll bring you these prunes in a minute. All right. But our prunes have just been under the grill. Which are fat. We'll just go and get a fork while James gets that out. There we go. Simon can put that. Smells well, really nice. These are fab, you like these. <clears throat> I'm getting nervous about the raw oysters again. Are you? Yeah, but I'll, I'll give it a whirl. I'm afraid I can't mm. taste them. No? No, they are. It's a texture rather than a taste. She chickens <laughs> out at everything, you see. But there we are. Well, 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 I go for it. Yeah. I think so. They're, they're quite big oysters. <laughs> yeah, I did pick the biggest. Yeah. And, and I suppose you, you you really have to just go for it in a hole. I'll try some of this sorbet stuff. Mm. Oh, sorbet, right. very good, and you can really taste the vodka. Yeah. Silence. I'm just wondering if I can... <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> Actually, that's all right. <coughs> Dribble down the chin. Hmm? Have we done it? Try this one. I can't try this. Oh, yeah, you have I'll to swallow it. them whole. Chewing them is not good. No, chewing's not, chewing's chewing not chewing good. oysters is not good. Taste that. Tell me what you think. They okay, are dip in the sauce. Wicked, yeah. They'll be very hot. Very, very hot. They've just okay. come out of the grill, so. <laughs> Thanks for that warning. How long does that this jam sort of keep? If you made a whole load of it, can you sort of keep it for a while? Mm. Yeah. That jam is that fine. Thai, what is it called? Thai jam? Thai chili jam. Thai chili jam. A sensation. Mm. Mm. Not sure about the oysters, James. No. <laughs> but we like these. Could you can't you show win, us how can to you? Eat one? You cannot win. Could you show us how to eat one like that? Sorry, I'll tell you what. It down your we'll throat. just give you the bottle of Bacardi then, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> well, Simon. That jam is great. No, that jam's a winner. And mm. the Thanks for coming in. It's a pleasure. Well, an absolute pleasure. <laughs> Will you come back? Uh, indeed, if there's going to be more food, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Join us again on Food for Lovers. Bye bye. Mm.